Welcome to the St. Louis Writers Group. Tonight we have four one-act plays. Uh, we'll do A Bit of Skin by David Hawley, Murder uh, of a Minimalist by Louis Shalane, Checkmate the Play by uh, Dan, Dan, what's your last name? I didn't write it down. Oh, McKee, Dan McKee, sorry. And uh, Window into the Universe by Dennis Fisher. So after each play, we'll have a, a very short discussion. We'll probably keep it a little um, casual tonight since we have four plays to get through. Uh, but at this time, we'll get started with A Bit of Skin by David Hawley. A Bit of Skin. Characters, Don, the husband. He is ill and has difficulty breathing. Played by? Brad Slavic, I, I think. <laughs> That's you. Okay. Shirley, who is the wife. And there will be a phone message at the end, which will be done by Susan Berardi. The setting is their living room. At rise, Don is lying back on the sofa, clearly looking unwell. He is pale and tired looking. When did you find out? Yesterday. Why didn't you tell me yesterday? I was tired. Tired. That's it. We're done. You didn't tell me. No more treatment. There must be something. Nothing that's going to cure me. I don't know what to say, Don. That's never stopped you up till now. Don, what are we going to do? Well, I know what I am not going to do, which is wait for the inevitable like a jellyfish washed up on the beach. There's something I do want to do, but I will need your help. Of course. I... anything. What do you have in mind? Oh, God, don't speak like that, for Christ's sake. Like what? Like I've... like I've <laughs> just come into your fishmongers to buy a filet of salmon for dinner or something. Good morning, Mr. Don. Welcome to Shirley's Fish Emporium. What do you have in mind? May I suggest a couple of pounds of fresh Icelandic haddock? That should speed you along nicely to your grave. I'm sorry. It's just a bit much to take in. I can help you with whatever you want. Well? Do I look well? What do you want, Don? A tattoo. A tattoo? You? What? An, an, an ink? What's it? No. A Scottish celebration with pipes and drums like they do it in Edinburgh every year for the tourists. I think with the massed ranks of the Queen's own Highland Regiment ought to do the job. 36 of the best brawny pipers, and I'm sure they'll make a fine display with their kilts, if you know what I mean. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. But make sure they wear candle tartans. I don't want to make sure to piss off uh, Mrs. McDonald next door. <coughs> of course, I mean an ink tattoo, stupid woman. But why? I have my reasons. All right, I dare say I can find a tattooist. Shouldn't take long if I look online. I have an artist in mind. A tattoo artist? What, where did you find out about him? It's a her. Why this particular person? Well, she specializes in tattoos that are designed to be kept. So, not temporary tattoos, I get it. No, you don't. These tattoos are meant to be kept permanently. I don't understand. Well, yeah, I'm used to that. She specializes in tattoos that are to be preserved in perpetuity. I still don't understand what you mean. You know what in perpetuity means? Yes, forever. And now you know what preserved means. Of course, but how is that going to be possible if you are... Gone? I... 
Yes, I guess that's what I mean. That's where the preservation comes in. Gone. How can that be possible? What are you suggesting? Like that freezing business? No, not that cryogenic nonsense, though. I'm tempted to get them to put my head in the jar so I can keep an eye on you. Don, don't joke about this. It's too much. What on earth are you talking about? I just want you to keep the tattoo. Not the rest of me, just a bit of skin. She's done it before. She can do most of the work afterwards, too. But the first stage will be to get the tattoo done with the right inks by the person who has the appropriate skills. It will be a very special tattoo for a lot of reasons. Can you help me with this? I can't drive myself. But why? Surely... Would you say you were an assertive woman? <laughs> Not really. I, I guess I... Timid, in fact. Maybe. I've dominated you, Shirley. I'm sarcastic, demanding, bombastic, and unappreciative. I know. I've always known. I may, it made my life easier, and I have been blessed from birth with a complete lack of empathy. Is that a blessing? Of course it is. People who are empathetic are miserable all the time on behalf of others. If you don't have empathy, you're happy while others suffer. It doesn't bother you at all. Of course it's a blessing. Well, you put it like that. Shut up. It's time short. I need to go this afternoon. Today? Yes. Shut up, will you? I'm doing this for you, Shirley. I'm going to do one last thing for you, you hopeless woman. You'll remarry after I'm gone. Don't protest. You will. I'm going to help you sort out who's suitable. I... What? How are you going to do that in advance? The tattoo is going to be a picture of you, and you're going to keep it. How on earth? In a frame. The same person who does the tattoo will remove the skin when the time comes and mount it. She's done it before. It's a skilled job, and she's one of the few that can do it properly and legally, I'm told. Don't ogle at me like that. It's arranged. <clears throat> but how will that help? It's, it's... Macabre? <laughs> yes, that's exactly the point. You're going to have it mounted on the wall. Right there. <laughs> Away from the window where it won't fade. But why... Whoever can pay attention to you while that is on the wall is really interested in you. Nothing else. Not money, not house, nothing. Just you. I'm, I'm speechless. No, you're not. You never are. Now, go and get my chair so we can go and see this lady. It's going to need two visits a week apart and I will not have that long, so let's get going. Go. <clears throat> Shirley exits. Sound of front door slamming. And that bit of skin should keep you single for a nice long time, darling. <laughs> you always were a rather dim woman. The phone rings. <laughs> Can you get that? I can't reach it. Ah, damn it. Hello, this is Don Tomlinson. I can't come to the phone, so please leave a message. This is a message for Mrs. Shirley Tomlinson. This is Kathy from Carnival Cruises. We have your booking for October, Mrs. Tomlinson. Two people, double cabin with balcony and sea view on the 10-day cruise to Aruba. 
but there's a digit missing from your credit card number. If you can give me a call back on 1-800-764-7419, I'm sure we can fix this quickly. Looking forward to having you both with us in October. Bye. End of play. Thank you, Dave, and thank you, actors. Um, so I think uh, for a discussion tonight, we should keep things a little bit casual. Uh, I'll read the questions that we ordinarily ask. You can uh, address any of those, though, at your will. Usually we ask, you know, something off the top of your head, what's your immediate response? And then we ask about the premise. Is the author's premise clear? We ask, are the characters clearly defined and uh, developed? Then we talk about dialogue. Is the dialogue uh, effective and realistic? Um, what about the dramatic effect of the play and um, the ending? So with those questions in mind, what grabbed your attention? Um, if I can speak, uh, just how nasty that guy is. Like, I don't care about him at all. Like, I don't know if that's what David wanted, but, you know, there might be room in that script to make him a little more, um, um, have layered, you know, a few, <laughs> I, I don't know uh, what you were t intending, David, but, you know, I got so as I really didn't care what was happening to him. <laughs> the, the ending really got my attention and it, yeah. I guess it kind of goes along with the idea that the husband is such a, a grouch that the wife is already making her plans, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to mention too it, it is very difficult to in a zoom meeting format to see everybody so go ahead and speak up if you have a comment uh, just try not to, to speak over somebody else but that usually is not a problem and if you haven't already come back with your uh, video feel free to put your video back on so we can see your face any other comments about Dave's play Uh, it was fun. Yeah, I, I, I liked uh, I liked where it went, and that then the phone conversation, of course, the phone message, of course, at the end is like, oh, she, she's glad too. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think from when we saw this not that long ago, I think we did it, didn't we? Because I remember it, and I thought, you know, that it was really quite an unpleasant play. I think the the spin at the end is is a good plus to it. But, but, you know, I'm more with Gwyneth's point. I find so the, the, the character Brad was playing was so totally unsympathetic, you know, and, and um, that you, you really didn't care. And I think you, you have to care, even if you don't like the character at the end, I think you have to have some, some connection. I think he was just too unpleasant to be, to, be, to be realistic and why the woman would put up with it, you know, up to this point. Uh, you know, let, the, the twist at the end makes it a little bit better. I did yeah. think it was an interesting idea what he said, uh, if she has any suitors after he passes, that uh, she'll know if they're interested in her because of that skin hanging on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, Lewis? I think you need to give give the guy a little bit of leeway because he's dying and probably only has about two weeks to live. So maybe he's allowed to be a bit, a bit bad tempered at that point. She can always turn the picture over anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it thinking it's going right in the dumpster. All right. Just to stop her after he's gone. Uh, you know, one thing I thought was clever is well, you're always asking what does the character want and i just i love the way dave handled that by first having the character say he wanted a tattoo and of course that's not really all that he wanted he wanted to live on and he wanted to uh uh keep his wife from uh remarrying and so on but the, i thought it was clever that you know what he, the character said he wanted was simply a tattoo and it made it yeah, i think it's just to piggyback on what Rob said, I think that's a great use of metaphor um, where, you know, one thing is used to, to mean something 
different, like the underlying reason for it. And the, um, the message, the phone message at the end, just, I, I, I love the way that just kind of makes the twist and it just nails it. Um, just, you know, it's quick, everything's quick and to the point and every word counts. And um, I, obviously, you know, people have talked about improvements and yeah, I can always get better, but I just thought it was really crisp and clean and, and fun to be part of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to say that it's also clear that he does not want to be pitied. So in a way that crustiness is a way to show that he, nobody has to feel sorry for him. Now you see, I, I disagree with that. I think he was all about how important I am, how much I need to be pitied. I'm dying and I'm going to still try to project my control of you into the future. Hmm. Um, and I think that was it. Now, you know, I think you could possibly do it by playing the character in a different way, making it less of an aggressive character. I mean, there's points where it is aggressive, but, you know, maybe you could play it differently that would give it more layer and make it a more sympathetic or, or a more sinister character, even. Um, you, you know, so maybe there are things you could do uh, with just that, that presentation that would make it different. See, and as someone said, I, I don't think the fact that dying is any, really any excuse to be that unpleasant. <laughs> but it's fun to play. Yeah. <laughs> and played well. Thanks again to the actors. Uh, are there any other, other thought is that he said he doesn't have to be that cranky. Um, it's true. The one, one writer told me once, the villain never thinks he's the villain. Uh oh. That's true. The reason why Robert um, recognizes this is that I entered it in the five minute play festival, but it didn't have the ending and it was edited down to five minutes. Um, and, but I, I, I like the idea of um, having somebody who's dying. So you're supposed to feel sorry for him, but he's basically such a horrible character mm. that you, you don't want to feel sorry for him. Um, and apparently this thing about preserving tattoos and skin is apparently is a real thing you can do. That, that, oh, was, wow. that was one of the original inspirations for it. I heard it on, I think I heard it on the BBC um, when I thought, oh, this is, this is really fascinating, but kind of horrible at the same time. It was as, um, sounded to me like the sort of thing that could have been written by David Sidara. So all, all, everything he writes is, is kind of vaguely horrible like this. But um, I might put it in first spectrum. Um, we'll, we'll see. I'll probably probably twiddle it around with a bit, but it needs somebody nastier than Brad. You're too you're too sympathetic, Brad. Uh. <laughs> everybody, everybody likes you too much. We need somebody really horrible to read it. Please don't make any suggestions here. Maybe I'll play it myself. 